Good morning. I'm Pastor Dave Stiles of Northside Christian Church. Doing this morning's devotion, and I'm going to be looking at 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. That's 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Let us pray. Lord, we are thankful for this word this morning. And may we truly walk in your light and not in the darkness. Lord, we pray that you give us insight, you give us revelation, your spirit speaks to us when we go astray into the dark, and that you bring us back into the light. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was reflecting on this scripture, one of the things that came to my mind is the definition of darkness, which is the absence of all light. Darkness, the absence of all light. So darkness is where Jesus is not. Evil likes to work in the darkness. Evil flourishes in the darkness. My, um, my house, I have outdoor porch lights that I keep on all night. In fact, one time when, and when we lived in Tucson, uh, we were starting a community watch. And we met with a police officer. And the police officer said, um, one of the best things you can do to deter crime in your neighborhood is leave your porch light on all night. Yet many people don't want to do it because they think, well, maybe it draws too much electricity. And really, it doesn't. And especially now with the LED bulbs, they draw very little power. I don't notice any difference in the power of my power bill as a result of leaving lights on all night. But we have lights on our porch and actually around our house and on our garage all night. See... People who, who want to uh, do evil, they want to stay in the dark. They don't want to operate in the light. Why? Because the light exposes them. Just as Jesus exposed the Pharisees, as we, we read through the New Testament, the, the Pharisees on the outside appeared like they were light, but on the inside they were very dark. And we all have dark things that we want to keep hidden from other people. Sometimes we want to think we can keep these hidden from God as well because maybe we're ashamed of things that we've done in our past. Maybe we're ashamed of our, our sins where the only way we'll get healing is to bring them out in the light. And the way we bring them out to the light is we confess them to Jesus and we confess them to one another. And once they're out there, once they're exposed to the light, then healing can begin, but as long as we keep them hidden deep inside of us, that's where Satan wants them to be. And no healing will take place as a result of keeping them hidden deep inside of us. In this scripture, um, it goes on to say, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. We cannot live in sin, in darkness, and have fellowship with God. Because we have a just, a just God, one who performs justice. And sin separates us from him. And so we can't go on and continue sinning and then think that we are in relationship with God. Because it just cannot be. We cannot be in relationship with a just God if we are in the midst of sin. That's why Jesus went to the cross for us. And he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. So that we, our relationship could be restored with God. Otherwise, we'd continue living in the dark. Repentance brings us back in relationship. Repentance brings us back into light. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, Jesus is light, we have fellowship with one another. Fellowship. We have to be in the light to have fellowship with one another. And that includes the church. 
We cannot be in fellowship one with one another if we continue to live in the dark. We can't keep anything hidden from God. We're fooling ourselves if we think we are keeping things hidden from God. The best thing to do is bring whatever you have in the dark into the light and receive healing from God. It goes on to say, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Because of Jesus' blood, we are purified from all sin. Jesus' blood. Without his blood, we wouldn't be purified. We would not be forgiven. Why don't we take advantage of that? Why don't we bring our sins, confess them, turn away from the darkness and turn towards the light. We no longer need to live in fear and that's part of the darkness. That's where the enemy wants us to do, live in fear and live in dark. Yet Jesus went to the cross and not only died, but he was resurrected three days later so that we can live in the light, so that we can be forgiven. There is no sin that is too great that God will not forgive. And if you're not experiencing joy or peace in your life right now, I ask you to come before the Lord Almighty on your hands and knees and seek forgiveness. Repent of your sins so the Holy Spirit can fill you and you can be filled with the joy and with the love and with the peace that only comes from God. Thank you for watching this morning. May God bless you in the rest of your day. Thank you.